the activity of enamines. When aldehydes and ketones react with secondary amine in the presence of trace amount of acid, we will get enamine. As the name says, it's going to have an ene, which is basically a carbon-carbon double bond and also an amine. So here is the amine part and here is the carbon-carbon double bond. Like enolate ion, the enamines can also be used to alkylate the alpha carbon of the carbonyl compounds, for which the lone pair of electrons on nitrogen need to come in to form a double bond between carbon and nitrogen, and the nucleophilic double bond will go and make a nucleophilic attack on this electrophile. So if this is going to be an alkyl group, then definitely you're going to form a carbon-carbon single bond. So with the use of the enamines, you can definitely alkylate either an aldehyde or a ketone. But one important thing to note down here is, here, it only forms the monoalkylated product. So in places where you don't have to use LDA, which is a strong base, you can definitely take advantages of enamines to alkylate the alpha carbon of the carbonyl compound. Let's now do an example on alkylating the alpha carbon of the carbonyl compound using enamine. So we are taking cyclohexanone and reacting with this secondary amine in the presence of trace amount of acid. And this is going to give us an enamine, right? Let's draw the structure for the enamine. Here is the structure for the enamine. This enamine will now react with the alkyl halide in an SN2 reaction. So you can try to choose any alkyl halide depending upon the um, alkyl group that you want to put in at the alpha carbon. Here in this case, we are going to take methyl iodide. For this, these electrons right here that is present on nitrogen needs to come in to form a double bond between carbon and nitrogen. And this nucleophilic double bond will now go and make a nucleophilic attack on this electrophilic carbon, thrust these electrons onto iron. This intermediate right here is actually an imine because whenever you have a carbon nitrogen double bond, we call this, we generally call this as imine. So this is an in, imine intermediate, which can be hydrolyzed to the final product, alpha alkylated ketone and also the protonated secondary amine that we started with. So here are the two products that I'll be getting. So we'll be having the alpha alkylated ketone and also the protonated amine. We can also put an acyl group at the alpha position of the uh, carbonyl compound if we use an acyl chloride as the electrophile. So let's take a look into the mechanism here again. So these electrons from the nitrogen is going to come in to form the carbon nitrogen double bond. The electrons from the double bond is going to make a nucleophilic attack on this electrophilic carbon. So this is going to be our electrophilic carbon. Thrust these electrons onto oxygen and those electrons are going to come back in because you have a good leaving group here, Cl, this is going to leave. It's first going to form this tetrahedral intermediate, but this is going to be unstable, right? This needs to get collapsed so as to eliminate Cl minus. Now you can see that there is an acyl group in the alpha position of the carbonyl compound, or which has now been converted into an amine. This one right here is an amine, right? And the next step, you're going to do the acid hydrolysis, which would cleave this molecule into a protonated amine and the corresponding carbonyl compound. Here is the acyl group that is attached in the alpha position. Enamines also take part in conjugate addition. For example, this molecule right here is an alpha, is an example for an alpha beta unsaturated carbon compound. This beta carbon right here is electrophilic, meaning that it can be attacked by a nucleophile. Since enamines are going to act as nucleophile, the enamine can go directly attack this electrophilic carbon and form a bond between the alpha carbon of the carbon compound and the beta carbon of the alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compound. Let's see how this is happening. First, to begin with, again, this enamine with its lone pair of electrons present on nitrogen is going to kick in to form the double bond between carbon and nitrogen. And that's going to push the electrons in the double bond to go and attack the beta carbon. On this pi bond will be shifted in here and the electrons from the carbon oxygen double bond is going to be get shifted onto oxygen. Here is the intermediate that is obtained, but again, this intermediate is not stable. This will now grab a hydrogen from the water molecule for which these electrons are going to come in 
and the electrons from the double bond is going to go abstract this hydrogen from the water molecule to give us this substituted amine and the last step would be the hydrolysis of this amine to give us the final compound. Here is a final compound and you can see that this is our alpha carbon of the carbonyl compound and this is the beta carbon of the alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compound and there is a carbon carbon single bond between both of these atoms.